made it easier to explain this data? Or do you feel like assuming that the molecule kits were used was better to explain this data? Which way more easily explain this data? Do you, do Clay, do you agree that the molecule kits? Okay, so here's the point of this. So I'm now going to ask you to put all materials back on the tray. The point of this is the following. Dalton didn't want to assume that one way was correct or the other way was correct. He was simply seeing how can we best explain the data. And we just showed that if you assume atoms or you assume no atoms, you could see what better explains the data, and we found that atoms do. In the last class, someone made a really good point. You could have possibly made 12 identical spheres and compared them to one sphere, but then you're essentially making atoms. So if you, if you make it that perfect, you're basically turning the matter back into atoms anyway. So it seems like the atoms better explain it. Sarah, question? You wash your hands right back there. Now, Annie, I think you calculated mass ratios for this, yes? Yes. So what are the point three number? Okay. So I'm trying to be Yep. Um, Okay. One point two. Let's look at this data. Do we think this is more easily explained? Do you think it would be easier to make this with your molecule kits or easier to make this with the clay? Clay. Okay. Yeah. So if we got this data, we might assume that matter is not made of atoms. The thing is, we don't get this data. So that would have to cause us to rethink our hypothesis if it happened. But instead, really the data we get is the data where all the ratios stay in a nice, pretty simple pattern. So therefore, we have to assume that we want to use a model that best explains the data. And this is going to be the model that matter is made of atoms. So if you have not done so yet, I would like you to log into this near box, and I'm going to collect trays real quickly. Um, choose a name quickly, and we can get started on the near box. then you can go to nearpod.com. There are tissues up at the front board. Yeah, so just go to nearpod.com. It probably hasn't been updated yet. Yeah, because Chris walked away, and when he walked away, he walked away with the password. Yeah, go to I'm sorry. Uh, exit down. Hi. Hey. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. This is not in your slides, but I want to remind you that you've seen this before. We talked about this in sixth grade, maybe some in seventh. Death in fifth, death in fourth, yeah, it's right up there. So this is how science works, is that we use observations, questions to develop a theory. And from a theory, we come up with some prediction that that theory can be. And from that prediction, we come up with a way to test the prediction. And from that test, we look at the results and see whether we need to modify the theory. So what I want to show you today is that the atomic theory is just a really good example of this. So Dalton came up with a theory, and then he had sort of the alternative to that. His theory is that matter is made of these unbreakable pieces that combine in whole numbers. Uh, oh. Uh, yeah, 
So there's a this is basically his his thinking. He said, I believe matter is made of atoms. But if not, then things should be able to combine any way they want, sort of like your clay did. So you made 12 balls of clay versus one, but you could have done that in any amounts, even with half pieces. Question? Um, yeah, so he knows that Correct, and that's what we're going to spend the next few days on. In fact, he's wrong about that. Um, well, the general shape of spheres, but, but the fact that they have no smaller pieces, etc., was a mistake. Um, so we'll get to that, and, and not everything he said was perfect. So my question for you is think about the activity we just did, and as best you can, describe what hypothesis can you make to distinguish between atoms and no atoms. So what was that, what's his hypothesis? That if matter made of atoms, then blank is going to happen. As, as best you can describe it. Think, think back to what we just did playing around with chemicals as my, or with elements as my hint. Combine in small numbers, 
And therefore, the mass ratios will either stay the same or be in small multiples. That's his key kind of jump in logic and his key prediction. On the other hand, if there were no atoms, anything can combine. So now we have his, his hypothesis and his alternative hypothesis. My question to you is, which one do you think actually ended up being true? His hypothesis. Right. Yeah, so his hypothesis could be that any amount of anything could combine. If Adam did not have like a clear, specific size or shape. Whereas his hypothesis of matter is made of atoms, is that there's only specific amounts of things that can combine. So which one? So which so now so now he's running his experiment, he's doing his chemical reaction. <coughs> and I'm asking you to predict the results. Good, so we have some I don't know which is totally reasonable at this point. But also, a lot of people are predicting that you would get small multiples, or you would get these proportional ratios. Um, and only specific ways that could combine. And that's exactly what he found. So he found two things. One is that when you combine two elements, you most often get one specific ratio. And the second is when you get more than one ratio, those ratios are in small multiples of each other. So that's definite proportions to multiple proportions. I think this graph actually shows it really well. It's hard to read. But this is hydrogen and this is oxygen. And what it's showing is when you combine the two, the amount of hydrogen you use, or the amount of oxygen, will always be proportional to the amount of hydrogen. So if you use one gram of hydrogen, you'll use eight grams of oxygen to combine. If you use two grams of hydrogen, you'll use 16 grams of oxygen. And that's, I don't know why this graph goes into the negative, because that assumes you can use negative grams of hydrogen. But the larger point is still made, which is that there's always a specific ratio, which is what a slope is, um, it's, that combines. Is there a negative hydrogen? All right. No, not that I know of. So uh, there's antimatter, but that's something different. Um, so this is a tricky question. What is actually being described in the multiples of each other? Choose what you think is the best answer here. What is the simple one? Small numbers, but that he couldn't see. 
So then we've got two good possible answers, and, and we have exactly a 40-40 split. Uh, some people are saying the mass ratios, and some people are saying the masses themselves are in simple whole numbers. So is it that, let's look back at some of our charts from like yesterday. Is it that this number needs to be a simple multiple of this one? Or is it that these numbers have to be simple multiples of each other? So, so A, these need to be in ratio, well actually I'm going to put it this way. C, this needs to be a ratio of this, or B, these need to be in ratio of each other. B. 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 Yes. It is B. And that's what I was looking for here as well. So that, that is what um, he actually was able to find. So I think finding it on the graph is something you were able to do. Expressing in words is a little bit more challenging. So uh, then he comes back to the atomic theory. So because he said, essentially, if atoms, then A. If no atoms, then B. Well, it turns out A, so therefore atoms. So it basically supports back to the atomic theory. Yes? Is atoms wrong for atomic? Well, so the word atom comes from, I believe, the Greek word. So there was a guy, Dalton he was, wasn't the first person. First of all, I hope no one says he invented atoms, because atoms were around long before him. Um, but he also wasn't the first person to suggest that atoms existed. It, this one goes back to the Greeks 2,000 years ago. Um, so atomos, I believe, is the Greek word for like, indestructible. It can't be broken. So I, I think that's where it comes from. Malachi, question. Why is it like, I can't find the, like, the blue one, purple one. So what this is showing is that you've got one, two, three, four, five, six different colored atoms. The colors here just represent different elements. And, like Dalton said, they have slightly different sizes. So here they're just combining in different molecules in different possible ways. It's basically what you've been doing with your molecule kits, except they don't have the connectors there. So, I'm going to skip this one and ask this last key question. Yesterday I asked, how well do you understand how Dalton used his laws to support his theory? I'm asking the same question today based on the activity we did and what we just went over. And I want honest answers. So if, you, if you're still not feeling like you're connecting evidence and theory, tell me that. If you think you are, please tell me that too. Waiting for a couple more answers. Let's see. All right, we're higher today. So yesterday we were a lot of A's and B's, or 1's and 2's out of 5. Today we're more in the 3 to 4 range, but certainly some outliers as well. And, and if you're an outlier on the low end, I'm, really I'm going to support you in this next activity, which is what we're about to do. So we're not going to have time to do all of this today. And therefore, I want you to flip all the way to page 9. Yeah, we'll come back to pages uh, 6 and 7 and 8 uh, tomorrow, probably. Tomorrow, we're also going to look at um, the next step, or the next guy who basically proved Dalton not wrong, but extended his model of the atom. So here's the next thing we're going to do. I'm just going to give you the mass of elements involved in a chemical reaction, and you're going to do some things with this. First, you're going to find the mass ratios. I've done that for you. Note these are not pretty whole numbers anymore, so it might take a little bit more calculator work. Then, you have to decide whether this supports definite proportions, multiple proportions, or neither. So, if I tell you that 4.29 times 2 is 8.57, 4.29 times 3 is 12.86, and 4.29 times 4 is 17.04. Would that be definite, multiple, or neither? Multiple. Those would be multiple. So I would circle, this is multiple proportions.